Gambit Chads. Welcome to the next weekly Gambit Genius, your best games. Boy, were there ever some good ones. This video in particular is dedicated to the weird ones. I have lots and lots of Gambits on my channel covering so many openings that you can use to surprise your opponent, so many great weapons, full repertoires, all sorts of stuff. There's some very, very popular ones like the Bush Gas, the Von Popiel, the Von Hennig. A lot of the submissions are those ones and they're very, very popular for good reasons. But this one is going to be dedicated to maybe the that one Gambit that might have been forgotten a little bit. Might have been forgotten a little bit. Might have been just one or two submissions there, but that I still love and that's still an absolutely brutal weapon so let's get to it even if you're an avid fan of the channel you might have forgotten about a couple of these because they're just such good gamuts and if you're new get ready for some <laughs> really cool stuff that you ne never seen before great sacrifices you guys play really such phenomenal games and uh it would really be such a disservice if i only showed my own games in in these openings on the channel and really the only people playing the, the stuff is me and people that watch me so this is this is all just such brand brand new stuff which is why we like checking it out this one submitted by mora horror who wrote all prep from your youtube video what more does one want great point an all prep victory what could be better d4 knight of six c4 you've seen this before but you're going to be surprised in a couple moves budapest gambit takes e5 knight g4 defend f4 knight c6 knight f3 now the budapest typically goes with like bishop c5 or bishop to b4 check they need to either like block that in some way and then you can play queen e7 and just recollect your pawn but the grafe budapest gambit goes with f6 really spicy move and very von popiel esque we're putting a lot of pressure right here and now if they take f6 we're gonna go queen takes f6 attacking the bishop attacking the pawn the most common move is bishop to c1 and this is mr mora horror's game and but now after bishop to b4 check all of a sudden, things get a little dicey for white. White here plays knight to d2, which is, again, the most common move. If the bishop moves, there's queen takes b2. Knight c3 is hit a couple times. You probably don't really want to do that. Knight d2, castles, e3. White probably thinks they're fine here. White probably thinks they're fine. Okay, they're just going to go d6, bishop d7, and give me some time to play bishop e2 and castles, and I'll be up a pawn in that case. Little do they know that Mora Horror has all prep from my YouTube channel from the, this gambit, and here we sacrifice another pawn with d5. A great move and it's not just bait because we want to also play d4 trade off this pawn and kill them here before they're able to escape so there's i won't get it into all, all, all the preparation but um <laughs> really really fun stuff so c takes d5 we're gonna go down two pawns but now we play knight cd5 and now we play knight cd5 with the bishop open with the rook op uh, coming in as well so we're really going to use all our pieces to come out this king white thinks they're fine White thinks they're fine. Okay, there's some pressure on f3. I can't move my knight, obviously, because of queen takes f2. All I need to do is just play bishop to e2, and next move, I'll castle. But you saw a couple of question marks there. It would have been plus 0.2 if they played this move h3, which is also covered on the channel. But knight takes f3, they, they really got to know some, some very uh, precise stuff in this line. Because there's a pin this way as well. This knight is not helpful to defend f3, which in turn needs to be defended a lot of times because of all the pressure here. And, like, lots of sacrificial ideas all over the place. Super fun stuff. So bishop to e2. Looks like it might be okay, but here we hit him with knight takes f3 check, and you don't have the knight, right? This is pinned. The king has not made it out yet, and bishop takes f3 was, was chosen here. Pawn takes f3 is an option, and it looks like, oh, okay, maybe we'll maybe we'll finally make black play a backwards move, and we might be okay bundling up in the middle. Unfortunately, for pawn takes f3, there is queen to h4, which is just a brutal move. Takes g4, opens up a new defender on f2, and otherwise, like, how are you defending f2? Rook to f1, there's this move. Uh, obviously, you don't want to castle because that's just checkmate in one. So, and you're really just lost. There's pins everywhere. <laughs> um, just, just, just a really, really fun line. Just a really, really fun line um, with the Great Budapest Gambit of playing this movie F6. So, Bishop takes F3. Okay, maybe it looks like they're okay again. Maybe it looks like they're okay and they can castle next turn. Alas, Queen to H4. We keep the pressure going. Again, no takes G4 because of checkmate right there. So, how do you defend on F2 and against Knight takes E3? Well, you got to play G3. But now after queen to h3, you're never going to castle. You're never going to castle. And you're very far from going this way. And black has a lot of very secret threats in this position. Uh, because this bishop is very soft. And again, it can't really move because of lots of pressure on f2. You don't want to make this trade. Bishop takes g4. Remember how we sacrificed that other pawn to open that? That was a great deal. Next move, we're going to play queen g2. Attack here, attack here. Uh, bring, bring our rook in and really just kill him. So... In the game, white chose this move a3, at least trying to untangle themselves from this pin. Alas, takes, bishop takes was force, 
because the queen needs to defend here. So bishop takes his force. And now here, still, <laughs> it's it, 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 it's crazy how in-depth this is. This is still all prep victory from the YouTube video. I'm just amazed um, that you guys remembered all this. But knight takes f2, really nice finishing touch right here. Uh, rook to f1 was played, which actually just hung the queen. But the point was, if king takes f2, we play bishop to g4, really using all our pieces. There's nobody that can defend f3, and just rook takes or bishop takes f3 next move is going to be absolutely brutal. So just a gorgeous, gorgeous all prep victory by Mora Horror. Shout out to um, this opening. I really, really like it. Uh, but basically, it's very Von Popiel esque. We play here f6 instead of just standard Budapest stuff. And with queen takes f6, we're making threats here, we're making threats here. We're going to play bishop to b4 check, and in a lot of lines, sacrifice another pawn. And lots of lots of stuff is covered there, including better options for white. But great game by Mr. Mora Horror. And shared it in the Discord, and people uh, really liked it. So, next game was shared by Mr. Board Trevor. Mr. Board Trevor, uh, who shared it here and got, 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 got a lot of reactions in the Discord in the Share Games channel. Thank you for sharing it there. Let's check out this game. It was in the Alphabet Gambit. The Alphabet Gambit is with c4, a6, knight to c3. So we play this move a6. Funny move. Funny move. Why is it the Alphabet Gambit? Is because we move the a pawn, and now we're going to move the b pawn. Take, take. We're going to offer that. And soon we're going to move the D and the C pawns as well. So almost, A, B, D, and then it'll be C in a second. But basically this knight is now off sides. We played B5 because we want to bother it with B4. And now it's over here. We're going to play D5. We're going to take the whole center. So for example, something like D4 here, which is the um, top move of the engine. But what we can do here is play C6. We can play E5. Takes, we can play D4. We can really, really continue to chase this knight all over the board. In the game... White just plays an AC3, thinking, okay, maybe I'll bring my knight back and it'll be okay now. Alas, <laughs> they're going to keep having to move the only piece they've moved this whole game. D4, knight E4, F5, knight G3. Okay, maybe now with F4 they can come back and not be attacked anymore, but we have more pawns to come at them. H5, this is still prep. This is still prep from the video. We want to play H4. If white plays H4 themselves, what we can do is actually just play like E5 and we can bring our knight to G4, really hang out on this square for a long period of time and just, oh my goodness, what a center. So... In the game, boy plays here e3, and now here, great move by board Trevor, d3, d3. <laughs> Our pawns are just so good in this line. This pawn's going to come all the way to e4, and this pawn on d3 has a very, very secret purpose. It wants to support our knight getting to c2. <laughs> Getting to C2, and otherwise, like, White is just having an absolute nightmare developing their position. This is not what English players want. English players are like, okay, we're going to play C4, we're going to play C3, which is going to be really solid stuff, not looking for anything crazy out of the opening. Unfortunately, this is total, like, like they're, they're, there's they've, they've played no other game like this. They've probably played no other game like this where they've had such issues out of the English variation in the opening. So, But with this crazy move, A6, on move 1, just to hit him with B5 and chase that knight. Fun stuff right there. So... D3, White here accepts this pawn. They've now played E3. We played D3. They accept um, the second pawn sacrifice with Nate takes H5 because it, 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 it's not just fishing. This is an annoying pawn. We are actually threatening to trap this knight with this move. We've controlled that last square. So with Nate takes H5, uh, and now just a great idea, Nate C6 just waltz right in there. Why not? And here, white, this is already a minus two position, by the way. White plays a3, thinking they stop knight b4, and this is another great feature of this line, is that we have this pin all the time. We can just play here knight b4, great resource by board Trevor. Um, white had nothing better than to take it. I mean, knight c2 is really brutal. It's really brutal. Like, they got no development. They got nothing that's going to help them out. Um, just a really funny position that, like, we've played f5 and h5 and d3. You'd think they should be able to punish us for all these weaknesses, but they have no pieces out that can do that. So otherwise, yeah, if they have no pieces, they have no pieces. Uh, Nate b4, just, it's just a fun game. And with Rick takes a1, we're already up in exchange, and White is not any closer to solving their massive development woes. And this pin's pretty brutal. We just need to attack that bishop one more time, and we're going to win it. And that's exactly what happened here. Knight f4, bishop a6. Great job defending that. f3, trying to make a little pocket for your king. <laughs> Do something to, to get out of the way there. But here comes the queen to uh, queen d6. Queen c6 coming, but first e5. Why not? Chase that knight away. And now queen c6. Um, just just brutal stuff in here. Black is already a full rook up uh, just out of the opening, even though white was doing kind of some pretty normal stuff. So here already uh, just a rook up by Mr. Board Trevor. And it takes e3, just a nice little um, finishing touch of that game. And now that pawn is just going to ride all the way to the end. 
Uh, Board Trevor wrote, played this at an o OTB Blitz tournament, possibly my favorite win in an OTB game ever. I f it felt like I was just in complete control from move 10, and White just got the life squeezed out of them. I think that is very, very good analysis of what happened in this game. Shout out to the Alphabet Gambit, shout out to Board Trevor. Um, great, great stuff. I, I, I love seeing this r these random stuff uh, by our Gambit Chad community just, <laughs> just crush. Speaking of which, and speaking of unknown Gambits... Let's talk another game by Mr. Mora Horror here in the Envy Gambit. So against the London, we play here C5, E3, Queen B6, and a lot of you might know the London Crusher 9000, which is with Knight C3, most common move, uh, takes Knight B5, and there's a lot of theory here. If you play Knight D5, you got to know a lot of stuff. There's a forced draw White can do, blah, blah, blah. But you might also know um, the video on my channel with C takes D4, where White can try to take this Rook, but they would lose immediately with Bishop to B4 check coming um, in very fun lines there. That's not what happened here. Well, I tried to avoid that with b3. b3, I actually, I, I spoke too soon. b3 is actually the most common move. And after g6, bishop to g7, white's just a little bit better. But we have this very interesting Envy Gambit, named after Mr. Envy, who uh, suggested this on my channel. We can play here, takes d4, e takes d4, d6. What's the point? Well, c3, not a great move, Let's, but even if knight f3, it's the same point. We want to play e5, sacrifice this pawn, just play bishop to c5. And what we're going to do here is we're going to, like, castle... We're going to play an ac6, we're going to play bishop to g4, we're going to bring our rooks to the middle of the board. And white can lose very quickly in a number of ways, actually. So, like, for example, let's say takes, takes. I think I had a game something like this. Uh, let's say an ac6, castles bishop to g4, just bring our stuff into the middle. Let's say here rook to d8. All of a sudden, after something like rook to e1, um, yeah, they immediately lose here. After queen b4, queen c3, they're already losing this knight. Uh, like rookie 2 knight d4 so because of the pin right there so basically it's just very very simple nice development here we sacrifice that e5 pawn we're playing bishop to c5 knight c6 bishop g4 rooks come to the middle of the board and just really easy stuff in so many ways for a white to go wrong in the game here by mr mora horror d6 was played c3 trying to reinforce here but it doesn't make sense unless you have kind of a strong pawn chain it's just kind of london player playing an automatic little c3 move not a very useful move there e5 takes takes bishop to c5 already lots of pressure on f2 it's great to attack f2 unless they can defend it by castling and if they can't then might make some for some inconveniences here so bishop to d4 was played castles take take and queen d4 uh, interesting choice by white. If they play something like knight to f3, I understand they might have a lot of trouble. Like, even something like this, right? Just a lot of pressure on e2 in a position like this, and they might just never be able to castle, right? So, so you know, we put a lot of pressure on e2 so that if... Yeah, king of one might be a good move, actually. Um, that if they castle, they're going to lose the e2 bishop. And otherwise, they're stuck. And so we're just going to play bishop g4 and ac6 and rook d8 and just finish our development and continue putting lots of pressure. Maybe someday bring a knight to f4. That's what can happen if you don't castle. Queen d4 was chosen by white to try and trade queens and to alleviate that pressure. Of course, we did not want to trade queens. Give a check and queen g5. Check was very useful because now queen g5 drew the bishop to e2 and we're threatening g2 and also a secret threat on c1. So some interesting stuff there. g3. Uh, knight c6 was played. Uh, Queen c1 was also possible, but maybe after queen d1, the white's okay. Nothing wrong with just continuing to develop with this nice move, knight c6, queen d2, and just dodge that queen trade with queen g6. And just what a disaster of a position for white. I mean, look at this. They have an extra pawn. Yes, they have a c pawn that we don't, but we've got a lot of pressure here. It's not clear how they're castling at all. We're going to play bishop to g4. We're going to play rook to d8, and we might just win that bishop due to this pin and overwhelming pressure down these files. Knight e4 is coming, bishop g4 is coming, rook to d8 is coming. Uh, just everything is killing them. Here was knight f3 and bishop to g4. Why not? Now threatening takes f3 with the pin. White tried to castle out of this, but here comes rook to d8. And white actually completely hung their queen, but it wouldn't have been much better if they did something else because uh, this pawn is not there to defend f3. So for example here, if something like queen to b2, there's a couple of moves that win here, such as something like queen to h5 attacking the knight. And if the knight moves, you we can just take the bishop for free. And knight d2 wouldn't even defend that because it would block the queen in this way. So just massive problems on the light squares for white here. And just a really, really nice win in the Envy Gambit. Little known one, but you might get this a lot. I mean, literally... Uh, e3, after London, e3 is the most common move, and b3 is the most common move, and e takes d4 is the most common move, so here, what I recommend, yeah, d6, and check out the original Envy Gambit video, and shout out to Mora Horror, and everybody who liked this, um, uh, link in the Discord, uh, about the Envy Gambit, uh, for playing that, 
good line. And of course, shout out to Mr. Envy himself. Okay, a few more games to get to, and I'm really, really excited for these lines here. Again, shout out to Mr. Board Trevor. It was another OTB Blitz game in a league he plays in at work. E4, E5, native 3, and here he plays an AC6. Um, Bush gas players <laughs> uh, are a, a, a little dismayed by that. But an AC6 was played, bishop to B5. And this is another gambit that I've shown on my channel, and another really interesting one that gives boy a lot of opportunities to mess up. D5. D5. Crazy move. Crazy, crazy move. I mean, there's a million moves that you could play here in in, in a Rui. I mean, like, like a million is not too much of an exaggeration. There's probably like 12, uh, but <laughs> which is close to a million. D5 is not really one of them. And just super interesting stuff. So the most common stuff I'll just show you is probably with pawn takes. We play A6 as the point. We want to play like E4 and Queen G5. So like, for example, takes, takes, takes. Uh, and now we can play e4. If knight e5, we can play queen g5, attacking the knight and attacking to take g2. This is kind of the general pattern that repeats. I mean, there's a lot of uh, theory to discuss here that, I, of course, I did in the original video. But in this game, white chose a different option, which they chose knight takes e5, and board Trevor did very well to remember the lines here, queen to g5, attacking the knight and attacking this pawn. White's best move is this very rare knight to f3 that actually supports rook to g1 in this position is the point. Uh, but very rare. Knight takes c6 was played, which is not a great choice, and here's why. It's because we can throw in queen takes g2. There's no good mo move for this knight. Like, like, yeah, you can give a check here, but now your bishop and your rook are just going to hang. So knight takes c6, we play queen takes g2. Rook slides over to f1. Queen takes e4, let's continue to eat. Queen to e2, takes, takes. So white might think, okay, yeah, you've taken a couple pawns here, but I'm up a piece. I took this knight on c6, and you can't recapture because your rook would fall. Right? So they were able to play knight takes e5, we hit him with queen g5, but they took c6, take g2, take, we trade queens. Now, how do we get this knight back? The key is that we play a6, so bishop a4, well, if bishop to a4, we would have bishop to g7 here, now winning this uh, a piece here. Knight to d4 no longer defends a bishop, we, we chased it to um, a4, and now we, we could just take it here. So here we're already collecting our piece, and that's actually why we trade queens, so there's no like queen e2 check and like knight takes e7 or something like that in this position. So here after a6, we're getting our piece back. Knight to d4 check was the best choice for white, but after takes takes, we are now up a pawn. We are now up a pawn, and uh, board Trevor continues to show really, really good technique here. King to d8 was chosen. He noted the engine's recommendation here of rook to a5, which is a really nice move, um, allowing what would be a fork. It's no longer a fork, because now the rook is uh, trapping the knight by controlling these two squares. Kind of cool stuff. There's no, like, if you had even a little bit of development, you could defend that. But otherwise, rook to a5, pretty nice move. But okay, king d8 is played, and it's a very solid extra pawn for white here. We're going to chase this knight away. Going to um, develop really nicely. Here comes our, all now all of our pieces are in the game. We got both rooks on open files, uh, starting from pretty much no development there. King d2, we're going to hit that bishop. Knight to h5, and the bishop is a little short on squares. Here comes bishop e3, bishop d6. Now we take that diagonal, attacking h2, trying to use the f4 square for our pieces. We gradual, gradual improvement of the pieces. White did not do a good job freeing their pieces. Now they got to play rook f2, very passive defense. Here comes more, knight f4. Now we're looking at the d3 square, some other things there. Here's rook to f1. And now a nice move here, knight to g2. Knight to g2, rook to f1, I guess, was getting out of the way of knight d3, which would have attacked here and here. But white really needs more pieces in the game because they're not able to control all the squares. These guys are kind of totally out of it. Knight g2 is now going to force that bishop to move again, and we're going to ask for this square. So we've chased it here. We chased it here. The bishop is gradually, our dark square bishop is gradually taking um, more and more real estate. The bishop to g5, f6 is now already putting the bishop in a spot where it's uh, kind of lost altogether. <laughs> bishop to g1 would have defended h2, but bishop to f4 check really drives this king back in a very, very uncomfortable way. And this rook is bordering on loss. This is the only square, and that's checkmate. Just beautiful harmony of the black pieces. I, I mean, the, 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 the stuff really just flows when your pieces are that much better. I mean, how did this happen? How did this happen that our pieces are like that? And it started in a situation where white should have been developing. Right, what uh, like 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 we really had no development, but just really good stuff. Um, just just gradual improvement of pieces. Even though white uh, did not really make any huge blunders here, so check f6 and rook to g1. So at least they're not going to lose a piece outright because the bishop is out of squares. Takes takes bishop to f4. Just dominant stuff with these bishops here uh, against these very very poor knights. So king to d1, rook to e3. Why not? Let's attack this. Rook to f2. King c7. Now we're going to bring the the rook's not hasn't been doing too much here. It will do a lot here, and that would be checkmate if we got a couple moves. Knight c2, finally coming back into the game. Check. 
Nifty 2, Rook to E8, continuous improvement of the pieces. These still kind of suck, and ours are still very good. Oh, by the way, we've been up a pawn this whole time. Knight to B4, attacking our Rook. Rook, Rook comes over, threatening to give check and take the Rook. Knight to C2, needs to defend against that. Let's come back. Knight to B3, let's come over here. Good idea. You know, we, we have them totally tied down, but they do are they are managing to hold a defense here and control a lot of the important squares here, here, like 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 all these we don't have access to. So why not just swing use the fact that we have them tied down, swing over, and take that H pawn. Here, just grab H2, good stuff, and now we have a very, very powerful past H pawn here. Good idea there to make sure you win the game. White has nothing better to do than move around. Now here comes bishop to h3, and all of a sudden we're pinning and winning that knight. Uh, so really, really good technique right there by board Trevor. Uh, coming from the crazy uh, Spanish counter gambit here with d5, offering this. Uh, knight takes e5 was playing the game. Queen to g5, taking g2, attacking the rook, taking here, and now just go going into an excellent end game that is minus 1.5 in this position. So great stuff. Um, board Trevor shared it here. And uh, people really liked it in the Discord, which is another reason why I um, want to share it. So give it a little democratic element to that. Uh, and so the last game I want to, the, the, the last couple games I want to share with you guys uh, are going to be in the same opening. And it's a brand new one. It's a brand new one. For a while, I had a lot of requests. I have a coffee and a water here. <laughs> for a while, I had a lot of requests to, for, to come up with something against the Trumpovsky. So we had stuff against C4, right? You guys saw the the, the Budapest Grafe Gambit against that. We had stuff against the London here with, with um, C5. You saw the London Crusher 9000 and also the Envy Gambit there. We did not really have anything against the Trompovsky. This one's kind of new. It's with Knight to E4, Bishop to F4, most common stuff, right? We attack the Bishop, comes back. This is what they want to do. They want to now kind of just hit your Knight a little bit. So it's a little bit different than the London if they just went here in the first place. But here... We're going to use our knight's positioning and play e5, this crazy sacrifice. So this is a game submitted by Michelle 182 uh, against his strong opponent, who is 2259 rated at this time. Bishop takes e5 was played. We're going to get to pawn takes e5 as well, but this is just a really, really fun and quick KO. Knight to c6, we're putting some pressure on this bishop. Bishop to f4, trying to relieve that pressure a little bit. But this is just this is just the main ideas of this line. We are going to come after this poor bishop with g5 and h5, right, while having the pressure. So we're threatening to trap the bishop, right? So if white just does something, we, we're going to trap this bishop with h4 uh, like this. And if they're going to create a square before they can come to h2 or f2, right? We're going to now take on g3 and make that very, very weak. And this is a situation where they kind of have to play something like king to f2. They can play queen d3, but they might kind of run out of um, good defensive resources very, very fast. So uh, tough situation for white. They realized this uh, and went with d5, which was not a good choice. And the best move here was actually h4. Anyway, just allowing this takes, and now we're using this awesome pin. <laughs> really cool stuff right there to just play h4 anyway. But uh, d5, yeah, they're trying to create the e5 square and then maybe a way to run home if, if we just kind of move our knight. I do like the move that uh, Michelle chose here, which was queen to f6. Just allowing d takes c6, and as you can see, that's a blunder, and this is a minus 3.2 position because of other ideas uh, in, in, in this line that, that we're also going to show in the next one. But the knight on e4 controls like a lot of really um, important dark squares, not just on that side of the board to hit the bishop, but also on that side of the board that's going to hit the king. Because now after queen takes b2, all of a sudden we have a really, really strong idea of just playing bishop to b4 check, and no one's going to block that bishop. No one's going to block that bishop, and you will, will probably have to like lose your queen. In this position, knight to d2 is played to defend uh, the rook. Knight takes d2, and king takes d2 was played, uh, which now leads to checkmating ideas. This was not looking much better for white if they didn't do that anyway. They were going to lose their rook, right? This is kind of the idea of doing it this way, is that the queen gets overwhelmed here and so can't support on d2. You don't have knight f3 yet that you've played or something like this. Uh, and otherwise, yeah, bishop to b4 is, is really going to kill you. So king takes d2 is played, and now here comes bishop to b4 check, and come to papa. This king is going to come out and out. It has to come out, king e3, bishop to c5 check. And it's going to continue to come out a little bit. Uh, the, the funny thing here is that if you come back home, queen to d4 check, king to c1, we can take this rook now. We can interrupt that. And otherwise, king to e1, we can win the game like this. So so uh, the bishop to c5 was a very good move because it's going to continue to drag the king out a little bit. No king d2 because of queen d4. No king d3 because of queen d4. That's just checkmate. So um, king f3 was chosen. 
But now after just D takes C6, I really like this move. Just D takes C6. Oh yeah, by the way, remember when you were up a piece? Well, how are your extra pieces doing now? Just D takes C6, grabbing that pawn and opening the bishop for uh, a killer bishop to G4 checkmate. So for example, if you just kind of bring something out, bishop to G4. This is checkmate, by the way. The queen controlling the E5 square. Uh, or, oh, well, this will be checkmate. Uh, castles might, 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 might get him. Lots of things get him. I mean, but just D takes C6. This king is in no position to make it back home. Uh, H3 was played to take away bishop to G4, but there's other things that win, including queen to F6. Very nicely done here. King to E4. I believe queen to F5 is checkmate uh, next turn as well. Uh, I actually was only looking at bishop to G4. I guess white was as well, but they didn't really have much better in this situation. E3 created a way home, but yeah, there was bishop to G4. Pawn on H5. Every, just, just everything comes together uh, when you play like this, and I, and I just love to see that. So really, really nice deceiver gambit right there. Let's check out another deceiver gambit. <laughs> Deceiver gamer, knight e4, bishop f4, e5. Sacrifice that, but instead of with bishop takes e5, pawn takes e5. What do we do against pawn takes e5? We play d5. Mm -hmm. En passant, en passant, the trick here is that we play this nasty move queen to f6. Instead of recapturing, we play queen to f6. So this pawn took here, took here, but they've opened up a lot of stuff, right? Now we're looking at the bishop, we're looking at this pawn, we're looking at that pawn, which we know is very important because bishop to b4 check can come, right? So takes was played, knight c6. The stuff was covered in my video. What a great gambit, by the way. We're down three pawns here. We barely just didn't get mated, but we've got everybody cooking. And the one piece white has out, they wish they had maybe back home. Uh, so this is a situation where, yeah, the bishop's under attack and f2 is hanging. So they played here bishop to e3, which you can understand. But after queen takes b2, this is really, really serious. Because bishop e3, I mean, they also wanted to fortify d2 here so that they had knight d2, right? So that they didn't have to play king takes d2 like... Um, in the other game, right? At least they have bishop takes d2, so the queen could keep defending. But knight to d2, we have um, a really, really nice way to finish the game played here by Sun Sentil. Bishop to b4 was chosen here. Uh, to continue to put this pressure, there's no pawn on b2 to support c3. Rook to b1 was played, and now a really, really nice finish to the game was knight takes d2 and resigns. It didn't need to be resigned, but this was a really nice queen sacrifice, because if takes, you have not just any knight move, right? Because then they can block... But knight f3 checkmate. The king has no squares, and you need to move the king on double check. You can't block or capture a double check. So just knight takes d2, fun stuff. Um, white could have tried to continue with takes, takes, takes. They're not losing immediately in this position, uh, but it's bad. So, and they're not up really any material there. Um, but yeah, the, 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 it's it's just really funny. Like in these lines, the, in, like you keep thinking like, oh, the queen can help out. The queen can't help out because they would lose the rook. So this is a common theme in the London Crusher 9000 and in a couple uh, in the Von Popiel Gambit. I mean, this this keeps coming up, right? With the, or the Budapest Grafe Gambit, right? The queen comes here, it takes b2, it gives bishop to b4 a check. It gives lots of problems here, and because of the pressure on the rook as well, and problems here as well. So cool stuff. We love taking on b2 when our opponent's king is in the center. Um, great, great game right there. Yeah, after knight takes d2, the, the, white just resigned rather than um, letting that <laughs> uh, go on the board. Last game here, uh, a little bit of a better defense sh shown by white. Again, Michelle 182 against Norozovich, a 22-24 blitz player here. Bishop takes e5, knight c6, bishop to g3. Getting all the way out of the way, not giving us g5 with tempo. But here comes h5, trying to play h4 and trap this bishop. f3. Uh, this one was actually all from my video, <laughs> this game. Knight takes g3, takes, and queen to g5. Queen g5 is just a really brutal move because we're attacking g3. Rook to h3 is not a great defense. So the only other option was king to f2. Okay, maybe you can hide like this. Maybe you can form like a little bundle around your king, and you'll have your extra pawn. Extra pawn go bye-bye. You can't take back because the queen on g5 not only uh, attacked g3, but it also opened up that defense. So you cannot take the knight because you would lose your queen in this position. So after knight takes d4, white tried to get creative here with rook to h4. It was not really a great choice of creativity because knight to f5 not only attacks the rook, but gives some checkmate-ish ideas um, as well. So knight to f5, g4 was played. Uh, it was Otherwise, that was literally checkmate in one, I guess. Um, and after queen takes h4, resigned. I, I don't know why I said that was better resistance by white. That wasn't great resistance by white. But you can't fault them. I mean, these are high-rated and strong players, but this is really, really tricky, fun openings. And nobody likes being this shocked in the opening and having to be on the back foot this much. So great, great stuff. There's so much awesome game gambits against um just almost every opening imaginable here and there will uh, continue to be more and i i i, I we're, we're we're breaking new ground here so i love seeing your great stuff 
um, in the Share Games channel and uh, in the Opening Ideas channel as we continue to talk about this, as we continue to explore this. So subscribe if you guys liked this this content. M more more is coming, and uh, yeah, get those Gambit glasses on and Gambit on, baby. Peace out. William Grave, the Gambit Man, takes his seat at the board. E4. E5. Knight F3. Bishop C5. The Bush Gas Gambit on the board. On with the Gambit glasses. Hero Pod unlocked.